Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And today we're going to talk about Alex Garland's Men, a movie that came out about two or three years ago, but we never got around to watching it, partially because we just had so many other movies to watch in yeah. so little time, and partially because it got such mixed reception, it kind of got put on the back burner of the list of movies we wanted yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah, it became less and less of a priority. Yeah. And I'm kind of happy to report that we ended up really enjoying this movie, the actually. Movie's really good. Like, we were surprised, given some of the mixed reactions we heard, how good it was. Um, the movie is about a woman who's husband has recently committed suicide so she has decided to get a secluded cabin in the woods in this in the countryside essentially get out of the big city go to the countryside and uh essentially deal with her grief as yeah. a result of that and it's set, set in great britain and it's set in britain yes there's a lot more to the situation than just her husband committing suicide and her needing to be alone to deal with the grief but we'll get more into that in the spoiler section because there's a lot that's revealed over the course of this yeah movie. yeah yeah because that's that's the movie. It's essentially a woman trying to heal through a very terrible, awful relationship that happened to her and an entity that enters her life and essentially has her go through, I don't know what else to call it other than the trials of toxic masculinity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Chapel Perilous of toxic masculinity. And every time it appears, it's the same actor. So all these different guys that she runs into all have the same face. This is a movie that operates on both a literal and metaphorical realm. There's things literally happening in the movie, but there's also an overarching metaphor that's very obvious. For example, the fact that every guy in this village that she goes to is all played by the same actor. The point isn't their individual characters, but how they all represent an aspect of toxic masculinity. Yeah. And having them all be the same men kind of shows how this isn't just a singular man problem. This is an all men problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a societal problem. And we can get more in depth into that into the spoiler section. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, the, the movie does that to make its ultimate point. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why she's going through this and why this creature from the forest that has taken the form of these men has started to torment her is because she's A, trying to deal with the trauma of what happened and the grief of what happened, but also she wants to know why. Yeah, not necessarily like, why is she in this weird magical situation? No. But like, why did her husband do this? Yeah, why did their relationship end the way it did? Why did her husband do what he did? Yeah. And it's more than just committing suicide, but yeah, we'll get more yeah, into that. Yeah, way more to it. And also what her fault is in that, if any. Yeah. Now, largely, a lot of it isn't her fault. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. as the movie shows, yeah. a lot of it has more to do with society and the way men are raised to be. Yeah. Not really anything she did, despite the fact that every man in the equation blames her. Yeah. In some way. Yeah, yeah. She's asking the question, what did I do? Because everyone keeps blaming her. Yeah. You know? <laughs> now, so far, I've been mainly talking about, like, the metaphor of the movie. What's literally happening in this movie is uh, she goes through a stroll through the forest one day, ends up at this weird tunnel that's like absurdly long. She realizes that through the tunnel, she can like have her voice echo very majestically. Yeah. So she like sings a little song into it that ends up becoming one of the themes in the movie. Yeah, it becomes the a light motif of the film. Yeah. yeah. And uh, something calls back and it is this creature that looks human, but is like covered in like green moss and leaves. Yes. It's essentially the green man. And this entity, the green man, yeah. keeps coming to her in the form of these men from the village who, again, are all played by the same guy. <laughs> yeah. And the actor they got to play the man yeah. is He's phenomenal. amazing. If you've seen Our Flag Means Death, it's the guy who played the antagonist of the first season. He plays so many different roles in this movie, and he plays them all pitch perfectly. Yeah. They're great. They all feel like different characters, even though it's the same actor. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta roll with it a little bit. Yeah. She never 
directly addresses that all these men have the same face. She just assumes she's going crazy. Yeah, that's like one of the weird metaphor, but also literal things happening in the movie. From her perspective, all men are the same at this point. Yeah. It's essentially saying, yes, all men. Yeah. And so she's kind of working through that too. And yeah. in a weird way, she kind of sees more of their individual humanity by the end of the movie. Yeah. Than she did at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> and it's partially because she's working through her own issues with everything that yeah, happened. And it, but it all leads to the same thing. But she is utterly terrified because this green man keeps accosting her at every turn, butt-ass naked. So you have, imagine yeah. a naked guy covered in leaves and moss chasing you everywhere, never saying a word and just making the most ungodly noises <laughs> and like trying to grab you and you're not sure why. Yeah, yeah, he's making noises like he's either trying to like hump something or take a dump. Oh, it's really uncomfortable. And whether it be the police who arrive or the priest she talks to later in the movie or just random people in the pub, yeah. Every man she encounters finds a different way to blame her for the situation. Yeah. Hey, yeah. buddy. Hey, hey Benny don't, alone. Don't, don't do that. You hey, not, Benny that's alone. not going to go well for you if you, you harass Benny. Benny loves you, but he also loves violently. Kind of like you. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, uh, if you watched our last two vlogs, Massimo is uh, the neighbor's dog who figured out how to use Gomez's uh, cat door while they were gone. And so <laughs> while we've been recording these last three vlogs, he has been visiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just kind of learned to live with it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because he's not a bad dog. He's not a bad dog. He's a sweet puppy. But they'll be home soon and, and uh, they'll come pick him up and it'll be all yeah. nice. Yeah. But until then, uh, we're just making sure he doesn't hurt himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm way more worried about him hurting himself than like any anything else. Exactly. And so with that said, let's get back to men. So yeah, this movie surprised me. I put it up there with a lot of the other A24 films of its ilk. Yes. Like the Midsummers, yeah. the Hereditaries, the Witches. Like, I put it right up there with all of them. It is the story of a woman coming to understand the nature of masculinity. Yeah. It's not about her discovering femininity. No. That's, it's not about her reaching She's already that. feminine. Yeah, she's already She's there. already a master of the feminine yeah. when this movie starts. This is all about her learning essentially the nature of toxic masculinity. Yeah. And that's the key. It's toxic masculinity. It's not just masculinity in general. This is all the toxic toxic traits you can possibly think of and where they all come from. Yeah. It's not excusing those behaviors. In fact, it shows in the movie how monstrous those behaviors yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't excuse them. It's just demonstrating them. Yeah. The green man is usually a symbol for rebirth. Yeah. It's usually um, depicted alongside, um, I forget what it's called, but it's a it's a figure of a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a, a feminine aspect. I forget what it's called, but there's the feminine side and there's the green man. And they both represent rebirth. And this story is is essentially her going through a rebirth. Yeah. But a rebirth after a terrible, divorce is not the right word because he committed suicide, yeah. but like a terrible relationship and learning to understand the other half of that relationship and also learning to not really blame herself, even though the world around her wants to blame her. Yeah, yeah, it's an inverse of what you normally do with this. Normally you have a guy who is like reborn through the feminine. This is about a woman who is reborn through the masculine. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting take and it's also very um, metaphysical. Yes. Like a lot of A24 films. Yeah. If you can sit through movies like The Green Knight, then you can understand oh, this I movie. I loved The Green Knight. <laughs> exactly. I loved that movie. <laughs> a very metaphorical film, but yeah. it is literally happening in the movie. So anyway, I think we're reaching way too close to spoiler territory. So Men is currently available on just about any platform to rent or buy. I highly recommend you do if you, like us, we're putting it aside because of all the mixed reactions. If you like other A24 films of this type that deal with women who are struggling with awful aspects of society, like The Witch, you'll probably dig this movie. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. Turns out the struggle of men is the failure to properly connect with the feminine because it's unavoidable in one way or another. Unavoidable. You either reconnect by fully accepting that part of yourself or you become emasculated yeah, and, yeah. Do you, and get it that way. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> 
So I guess like the first big thing that's kind of revealed over the course of the movie is the husband didn't just commit suicide. Oh no, he's an abusive prick. The husband is a complete and utterly abusive prick. He threatened the suicide if they got a divorce. Yeah. So he was threatening suicide as like a weapon to control her. Yeah, he was emotionally blackmailing her from from That's a good the word. Immediate. Blackmailing her. Emotionally blackmailing her. 100%. He also at one point uh hits her. And it also turns out that he didn't commit suicide. He slipped while trying to sneak onto her balcony when she locked him out of the house. Yeah, like an idiot. So not only is he abusive, emotionally manipulative, he is also a moron. Yeah. The other thing is really mainly just the things the green man does. Yeah. There's a point in the movie where it's just her and the green man. The rest of the village no longer exists. Yeah. It's just the green man coming to her in various forms and doing horrific things. Yeah. Like at one point he takes the form of the priest and like tries to have his way with her. Yeah. Because the priest's whole thing when she first meets him is he seems like he's so understanding, gonna help her work through the emotions of what happened with the husband. Yeah, but he's a Catholic priest, so you know something, it's not gonna go But he's well. a Catholic priest, so he ends up in the end blaming her for it. And then also like trying to like touch her. Yeah in uncomfortable ways. Yeah. Like getting way too touchy. Yeah. He's a man who obviously lusts, but he, for whatever reason, has chosen this Catholic life, you know? So naturally when the green man takes that form, that form tries to have its way with her. Yeah. And is blaming her the whole time, but that's not her. Yeah. That's his own lust and that's the church. Yeah. There's other characters that aren't as awful as the priest. Like there is the, essentially the landlord of the house that she's staying in. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess you would call it an Airbnb. I don't know. What yeah, I don't know there. exactly what the situation is. But he's yeah. actually a genuinely nice guy, but he's kind of impotent. Yeah, yeah, he is very impotent. He's not much of a threat to her, but she still doesn't feel like comfortable opening up to him. Like there's right. a point in which he like asks her if she plays piano and she lies about not being able to play the piano because she just, yeah, she just doesn't want to have a conversation. She just doesn't you know? want to. Like she's not in a place where she can talk to men right now yeah. after her husband, <laughs> understandably so. It's revealed when the green man takes over him that he kind of had one of those overbearing, abusive, overly masculine dads. Yeah. And he was never good enough for that. Yeah. And yeah. so like each of these characters, she kind of like learns like what makes them tick. Like what awful thing in their past or part of their life made them into the toxically masculine person they are now. Yeah. Or lack thereof. Lack thereof masculinity in a weirdly toxic way. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of body horror in this last yeah, part Yeah, because too. in the last part, whoa, you watch as all the men who have all the same face turn into each other, but the way it happens. It's a series of each one becoming pregnant and then giving birth to the next incarnation. Yeah, and every time one of them assaults her, she injures them to get away, yeah. right? By the time you get to the last injury, you realize, oh, these are all the injuries her husband had when he fell off the balcony. Yeah. Like the split arm. The split arm. The fucked the, up leg. Yeah. The head injury. Yeah, the fucking spikes sticking through his throat, yep. you know? Yep. And so by the end of it, it ends up turning straight up into to her husband yep. and they have this final confrontation moment where it's just like why yeah why any of this and like the husband just looks at her and it's just like i wanted your love there it is all bored out and all this awful terrible toxic behavior because he just wanted her love Yep. It then cuts to the next morning and her friend arrives to like pick her up. But like her friend walks through like the damage that was done the night before, making it very clear that it all actually, it all happened. actually happened. It wasn't just yeah. in her head. Yeah, and because those birth seeds are, whoa. Let me put it this way. Someone on the effects team clearly studied birth videos. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. The body horror of the birth sequences are fucking it's wild. amazing. Not to mention the body horror of the split arm he uses to grab her once it's split. It's yeah. Like, oh, it's like a practical effect and sometimes it's digital but it always looks good yeah 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 and it's like and it's like it's, he, now he's got like a monster arm you know? turns into a fucking like clive barker cronenberg movie by yeah. the end oh yeah the friend finds her on the steps and she's essentially kind of reached her own rebirth at this point yeah having gone through the whole night and there there are many ways you can interpret what happened between her sitting on those steps and her last exchange with the husband because when you see her with the husband she's got the ax that she was going to use to protect herself. So you can assume that, okay, she chopped up uh, the, the green man husband yeah. 
form. Which which would actually like fit in with what the, the Green Man is. It what, is yeah. it, it is a very valid interpretation. It's my interpretation. Yeah. Because she's sitting there holding one of the flowers that was on the Green Man. Yeah. So either she plucked the flower or she chopped him up. I like the interpretation that she chopped him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like I said, like he's he the Green Man is also a self sacrificing figure. You know. So basically what you have here is a movie in which a mystical creature of the forest, the green man, helps her work through her issues so that she could stop blaming herself. Yeah. For it. Yeah. <laughs> like he may have done this for my love in the end, but the reason why he wants my love is because of all this other shit. Yeah. That's not my fault. It has nothing to do with me. Yeah. You know, not even the love has anything to do with me. No. You no. know. It's because of all these other reasons. Yeah. That guy shitty dad. That guy has devoted himself to the church and is, is empty as a result of it yeah. and lustful. That kid is emasculated because he's a child and not allowed freedoms. Or yeah. None of this is because of me, but they're taking it out on me so they don't blame themselves. Yep. Like I said, there's the uncomfortable truth. It's a, it's a really good movie. I enjoyed the shit out of this movie. There are many ways you could like overanalyze it and like pick it apart and stuff like that. But I think that's true of all these A24 films if you oh, wanted to. Oh yeah, of course. You know, <laughs> you could come up with a really fucked up interpretation of all of them if you wanted to. But that is my interpretation of men and why I think men is a phenomenal film. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's actually really good. I think it's 100% up there with the other two Alex Garland films that I've seen, Annihilation and Ex Machina. Yeah. Fantastic movies. Haven't seen Civil War yet, can't comment on it, but I loved this movie and I love those two. Yeah, I really think that the problem a lot of people had, particularly like guy reviewers that didn't like it, mm -hmm. is that they saw themselves in the movie and couldn't accept that. Yeah, yeah. You I could see myself all over this movie. Oh yeah, no, totally. And totally. I actually appreciated that because it's like, it goes into those toxic impulses. Yeah. You know? Yeah, why do we do these fucked up things? We know, we know, we know those urges, we know those instincts. Like, why? Well, you, we've all gone through it. Yep, yep. I would love to see a woman filmmaker adapt like a sequel to this called Women. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. <laughs> Like a companion piece. Yeah, yeah, oh, like a companion yeah, that piece. Would be cool. But I wouldn't want Alex, Alex Garland to do it. I would want a woman to well, do yeah, it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would require, <laughs> that, that that requires like, in, how to put it, inside knowledge. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. <laughs> Where can they find you, Count Jacula? Oh, you can find me here on YouTube every uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, streaming at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and also on Tuesday and Thursday. That's where I mainly do the video game thing. Y'all know me, I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages, and remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. Ah, all right. Massimo has decided to join us for this last bit. And if you made it this far into the video, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag love. Use the hashtag love. <laughs> that way I know, that way Jack knows, that way the whole world knows that, <laughs> that Massimo was in these last three vlogs and he is a, he is a terror. Maybe we should put Massimo down. No, I, no I, I think that's what he wants to do. Not my dick! <laughs>